Hey, District 6 here with a quick policy update about what's on Council's table. So you might have heard some debate happening in the media around Airbnbs operating in the city. Airbnbs are just one company that operates short-term re rentals in the city of Detroit. There's, there's other ones that I'm not as familiar with. And so there's a piece of legislation currently on the table before council that was drafted by council member Ayers. And I'm gonna go over seven key provisions of that legislation at a very high level. If, you, if you're interested in reading the details in the actual draft legislation, just click on the link in the description below. So, um, why short-term rentals? A lot of folks when they travel maybe can't afford hotels or hostels, so they prefer staying in neighborhoods to get a different type of experience, and sometimes they're more affordable. In the past, we've received complaints from neighbors about noise and traffic and parking of guests staying at these short-term rentals, and that's kind of what started some of the conversation around short-term rentals, i.e. Airbnbs in the city. So some of the key provisions of this legislation to point out is uh, number one, the the location, the house must be your primary residence. So you actually have to live there majority of 365 days of the year. Um, number two, that if you uh, do stay there, you don't necessarily have to register that site with the city of Detroit. However, if you leave for a weekend, for a week, for a month, whatever it is, then that triggers the other provisions of the ordinance. And so that would mean you would have to get registered with the city and get a permit. The permit application timeline is between January 15th and January 31st each year. Um, you would have to pay some fee. That fee is still being determined by the building department and will be rolled out later on. Um, it would also trigger a, a time limit gap, a time limit, so you couldn't rent out your space for more than 90 days in that calendar year if you are not on site at your house. Um, and it would require that, not require, it would put some implement spacing requirements. So for example, you couldn't have an Airbnb open up next to another Airbnb. There's a minimum of a thousand foot distance required between each Airbnb uh, if you are off site. If you come back home and are there, then all of these provisions kind of go away. Um, the other thing to highlight is that these provisions don't uh, aren't enforced during special events. So for example, the auto show or uh, major sporting events and, and different musical and cultural events. So that's something that's key. And then a couple more, you can't have more than 10 people at your short-term rental. Um, guests can't have overnight visitors, so they would have to leave the site by 12 a.m. And then last but not least, there's a provision around pre-registration. Pre so if you're currently operating a short-term rental in the city of Detroit, um, you can register that site one week early so meaning the second week in January um, but you have to show that you have a blight clearance record meaning that you don't have any outstanding blight violations or blight tickets um, I think that's it hopefully that's helpful again for more details click on the link to the legislation in the link below and if you're interested in participating in the conversation around short-term rentals come out to the public hearing that will be happening on Monday October 7th at 10 10 a.m. in the public health and safety committee thanks for watching did you like that video? Then please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the link below to sign up for our weekly email full of lots of great information and resources. Thanks.